Sagittarius. Hello, beautiful soul. How are you? My name is Alicia. Welcome, welcome back. This is Empath Tarot, where spirits messages directly correlate with being highly sensitive here on planet Earth. Now, in this reading, we will be pulling some messages that will help uncover any abundance blocks you might be experiencing at this time, money or love related. If there is a certain amount of money you would like to manifest into your beautiful life or that special somebody, go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe. If you're interested in receiving a personal reading with myself and spirit, all of the details will be down in the description box below, along with my husband. If you haven't yet, check him out. He is over at 7D Tarot. And be sure to stick around until the end of this reading. We will be pulling a final message from the universe. So we see that there is a relationship here. It could be a new one. Could be one that you've been in for a bit, but um, you're feeling like you want growth in it. So you feel like you want to feel like it's new again. And we see here that it's, it's just time for change. There's that five of pentacles. Five of pentacles just represent, we can't keep going the way we're going because it's not sustainable. It doesn't feel good. There's not any passion. There's not any excitement. There's not any, you know, there's not any growth. It's just been the same. It's stagnant, you know, stagnant energy. Um, and so whenever we get to this place in our lives with our relationships, which it happens, it's because we've been practicing other things. We've been building businesses or working on ourselves or whatever it has been, right? And we neglect practicing love. We neglect practicing connection. We neglect, neglect practicing closeness. Now, the more we feel disconnected from our own selves, we're going to disconnect and close our hearts off to others as well. And that's why we always say the first practice you want to do is to always be loving yourself and always be practicing loving yourself. So if somebody, what would somebody do if they were in love with themselves, right? They, they would, they could take care of themselves. They wake up early. They, they, they keep their hygiene up. They exercise. They feed themselves nutrition and not food, but nutrition, right? So that's what it's about. At this point, reconnect back. Now, in order to get clarity in your life, if you ever you're in this standstill with a relationship, with just looking, needing to know how to evolve, it's always going to boil down, Sagittarius, to you going within for the wisdom that you seek. Having a bath is, is one that is so incredible because when you lay in water and the key to a bath, because any, with through any kind of spiritual or evolutionary, let's say, journey is to Stay with it until the uncomfortableness goes. That means you stick with a diet until no longer you uh, feel uncomfortable. You stick with a routine until it no longer feels uncomfortable. You stick with it until that uncomfortable energy goes, right? You clear away the emotion of it, and then you're actually collecting the data. You chill in a bath, you soak in a bath until the feeling of I'm bored, I'm antsy, I'm impatient, I'm hot. When all of that goes, that's when the clarity is going to come. Okay. So you got to soak in the bath until that, that uncomfortable energy goes. And then that real, that real stuff is coming in. Right. And that's, that's when you're going to get the results from that. Now, um, what we see here is because of this realization that you want, um, you know, more passion, maybe even just love in general, maybe you're looking for a relationship to come into your life that feels exciting and that you guys do stuff together and adventure together. And it feels really fun and exciting. So, once you know what your desire is, right? Once you know what your desire is, it's coming in for you. And actually, we can even see that here with the Ace of Wands, which is new growth, passion, new beginnings, uh, all the things that you're looking for, that's coming in. So the, we're in your current time and space now. We also have the Five of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. The only reason why you're not going to feel like your desires are being met is because you're influenced by your outer world. Pay attention to that because a lot of the times it's very sneaky. We don't feel like we are being influenced, but we are. So for instance, we think we want this, but then we see someone else behaving in other ways. We're like, oh, I want that too. And then we see another couple. I want that too. Or whatever it is, businesses and whatever, right? We keep jumping ship. I want that. I want that. So the name of the game is, is then we have this, we're, we're kind of paused and we're kind of, you know, instead of deliberately creating, we're just collecting data, right? We're collecting data. So collecting data is great, but when it's constant emotional decisions and we're not actually dialing in what we want, um, it means that we need to get ourselves grounded and reconnected. We do have the connect with your ancestors card coming forward. <clears throat> Pardon me. So Really just, again, releasing your thoughts and connecting back to like literally the galaxy that's within you, the wisdom that's within you, right? You're a multidimensional being, meaning that you have the answers of what you want within you, but you've got to actually connect to that part of you. Stillness will do that and the intention of connection will do that. 
being generous of spirit, meaning that you are in the flow of your spirit, of spirit guides, of the spirit realm, instead of ego, which is edging God out. We don't want to edge God out. We want to welcome God in or spirit, whichever you connect with, universe, whichever, right? So when you are in this, like, um, when you are realizing what you want, let the outer world inspire you um, and let the outer world give you ideas of what you're looking for. And so when you don't know what you want, when you don't know what relationship you're looking for, when you, when you are flopping back and forth, then the universe doesn't know what to bring you. So what you can do then is have a journal and you write down data I collected, right? I usually write down data I've collected and it's usually from the day before. So whatever I remember that stands out in my awareness, that's illuminated, that feels really good, I'll write that down as a bullet point, right? No emotion, just bullet points. Data I've collected. This feels good. This feels good. I like this. And you just keep get used to writing down the puzzle pieces that lead you to the bigger picture, right? Or the clues or the things that you love because that's leading you towards yourself and that's allowing you to understand what you're looking for. Remember, a partnership, a relationship is a, is a unit where you come together and you do stuff together, right? The more you do stuff with your partner, the stronger this relationship will be. It's the minute when, they, when we separate. I have my life, you have your life, we come together for dinners and family functions, but that's really it. That doesn't fly. That doesn't feel good, does it? It doesn't really work. We think that people are, we're not, we're not being, uh, we're not, there's not enough affection. We're not being, um, you know, seen, heard, appreciated, you know, and that other person's feeling the same way, right? So when you come together and you become a unit, that's when things are going to uh, evolve and skyrocket forward. And so if you do meet somebody in your life and you do attract someone in, try to understand what you're looking for in a partner, what stuff you want to do together in this world. Maybe you want to travel. Well, then you don't want to meet someone that doesn't want to travel. You probably want to meet someone that does want to travel with you, right? So you can go and do these things together. So that's what it's about. So get, know what you want in this game of life. Know who you want to partner up with, right? And then that way you'll have your heart more open. And the key is to having our heart open to this journey. So um, when you are feeling like you aren't certain of, when you aren't feeling balanced, when you're not, when things are not feeling stable, just know that through that instable instability in your life, that's actually when, when, when you're going to be receiving clarity. So even though I know it sounds a little counterintuitive of when we are in like an, insta an unstable time and we're looking around at our lives and thinking like, I wish things were different. It's actually through that moment of contrast that you're going to be receiving new insights and you're going to be receiving new ideas. So when you are again, feeling like things are feeling stuck, you're not liking things. That would be a good time to sit with yourself, with your journal, and then just write down puzzle pieces I've collected or, um, uh, you know, what I'm looking for, what I want to do in my life and what I want me and my partner to do together. Right. And, and, and then you, it'll start to kind of slowly start to build and, uh, the momentum will basically start to build from that, from that awareness. Everything is just an awareness, right? So your universe messages actually make it easy for your heart to open. It's easier for our hearts to open when we know more, when we know what we want, when we, when we know what our li we want our lives to look like. You know what I mean? Like for me, I'm a very, um, I, 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 I like change. I love change. I'm changing all the time. Uh, so whether it's uh, clothes or whether it's environment or whatever, I always have to be busy doing something. And if I had a partner that didn't want to be busy doing something, I would fall into my human programming of not being busy right? And then I would not be busy, but then I wouldn't feel satisfied. And I always would want to be more, right? So then if that was the case though, because you can change the energy, right? Is that you would have to then start being busy. You would have to start doing the things you want to do. And then your energy would leak over into the relationship that you share. Or there would be that moment of awakening where you're realizing like, this isn't the right partner for my true spirit, right? But you don't know until you do it for yourself. So you got to start doing, you got to always remember to do things for yourself. And then you understand what you want. And once you know what you want, clarity is, is had, right? So the name of the game again is to make sure that you have practices that connect you to who you truly are. And what we're seeing here, Sagittarius, is just having a connection practice where you're intentional with connecting to your ancestors and maybe soaking in that bath. And again, the name of the game is to stay in a space until the uncomfortable emotions of unpleasantness go and that's when the true clarity comes, right? And then once you kind of practice that, then you can practice writing down the puzzle pieces, the clues, and that's going to give you some insight of, of what you want in your life and what you want to attract in and the life you want and, and, and all sorts of things. It's, it's a wonderful place to be. So 
you're the you're the you're the creator beautiful soul you're the creator so even though there's always opportunities and choices around us sometimes these opportunities and choices can become confusing or even more overwhelming and that's why we keep a journal to write down when things feel good and then we keep it there and then when we're we are feeling confused or uncertain you can go back and reread your journal and remind yourself oh yeah this is what I like. This is what works for me. You know, there's been so many times in my journal that I have written down when I wake up and I exercise and then I meditate, I get better results. I've written this so many times. I can't begin to describe it that it almost seems ridiculous. I would practice anything else in my life. So for the last few weeks, I've been really focusing on healing my emotional eating, which I am now pretty much through the weeds here and it's feeling really good, feeling really positive. I now understand what my body's needs are. And so everything is clear. Cause again, whenever we're feeling emotional, it's because we don't know enough. So we have to open up our hearts to the journey of knowing more. Does that make sense? So again, going back to your uh, card here, make it easy for your heart to open. That means saying yes to spirit showing you, and then just learning about it, learning about yourself, learning about the process, learning about what you're looking for, and then it'll be easier for your heart to open. So write it down, soak in that bath, connect to your ancestors, trust the process, and just know that um, until we know enough, we're not going to feel certain. So don't worry about not feeling certain. Just keep learning and keep understanding and keep collecting the data. And very quickly, the bigger picture will be shown to you. We love you so much. We hope you enjoyed your reading. We hope there were messages in here for you. If there was, like and subscribe. We truly appreciate you. Spirit loves you. I love you. And until our next reading, keep shining, baby.